Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. This is our first evening lecture in Ramadan. And we had announced that we will start the the new book, The Diseases of the Heart, The Realities, The Signs and the Cures of How to Cure Those Diseases. But like I said in the morning today, we won't start today, um, nor tomorrow. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of people who still need the book and they'll want to study with us, but they don't have the book yet. So we'll probably start, probably start on Sunday, that specific book, inshallah. Or maybe next week that is much better, because there's a lot of people still who, they would love to join us. You know, so it just makes sense for us to wait for them. And like I said in the morning, there's no worries, because we will study the book in depth, inshallah, in Ramadan, and we'll finish it. Uh, give me the book, so I can show those who don't know the book. This is the book. There is a, a new book, alhamdulillah, Diseases of the Heart, the reality, the signs, and the cue of it. If you don't have your copy, you can get your copy here. It's just $15. If you can't afford $15, it's completely free. You know, there's people who have bought those books to be given for free for those who can't afford. So if you get a free book, just make dua for those who bought those books. And if you want to do the same, you want to buy some books so they can be given out to other people. Then, inshallah, there is Sadaqatul Jariya for you. We were about to ship some books today to London, Ontario, and tomorrow we'll ship books to Halifax, Nova Scotia. That is your sadaqa, which is going somewhere. And you know, the best sadaqa is the sadaqa tunjariya, the Prophet says, is the continuous charity. Or you leave behind knowledge which people benefit even after you die. If you want to do that, you come speak to me after. If you're watching online, you email me, insha'Allah. But we'll still stay on this topic. For those of you who have been together, last winter, we started Kitab al the book of heart softeners, from Sahih al-Bukhari. And I always say this, to show how important this topic is, of working on our hearts, the greatest books we have in Islam, after the Quran, is Bukhari and Muslim. And both of them have books of heart softeners in their Sahih. This is an essential part of our Islam. So we started Kitab al last winter, and then we stopped around February, because we were doing the Sifatul Salat al-Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet's prayer described. So from today we'll continue. It's easy, you can access it. Either you have your copy of Sahih al-Bukhari, or if you have a phone, it has internet, you can follow. Just go to the website sunnah.com. S-U-N-N-A-H dot com. Sunnah.com. Click on Sahih al-Bukhari. And then go to book number 81 heart softeners or making the heart tender click on sunnah.com s-u-n-n-a-h.com go to sahih al-bukhari go to book number 81 making the heart tender are you there ashraf are you there aziz salam Ah, uh, Sheikh Sajid, you got it? Once you are in the book, 
of making the heart tender, we are in chapter number 20. So you browse down to chapter number 20. First you go to sunnah.com, click Sahih al-Bukhari. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it is the 81st book, book number 81, making the heart tender. The right translation is the heart softeners. Are we there? Once you're there, you go to chapter number 20. Because the last chapter we did was chapter number 19. And all of those lectures are available on the YouTube channel. Up to number chapter number 19, which is 12 lectures we did. Today will be the 13th lecture, inshallah. If you have it and anybody else wants it, just send them the link. Are we there? Are we there, chapter number 20? Yes, refraining from doing things Allah has made illegal. Very good. I'll ask those brothers, if you want to sit on your chair, you bring your chair close. You bring your chair close. We don't sit separated like this. Then we'll never unite. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu used to teach. When he used to take a camp, you can bring your chair. If you want to sit on the chair, you can bring your chair, but come close. He said, Mali Arakum Izin. Why do I see you separated? You're split up. We need to come closer together. If you have it, send him the link. It's easy. If you're more technical, it is sunnah.com slash Bukhari slash 81. So chapter number 20 he says, Imam al-Bukhari says, Babu as-sabrim an maharim illah. Chapter, having sabr, patience, from the things Allah has made haram. In the translation you have there, they said, chapter, refraining from doing things Allah has made illegal. Like we always say, this chapter or this book, it is dealing with everything which brings our hearts close to Allah. Everything which makes or brings our hearts close to Allah. This is what we are learning. So this chapter says, Babu as sabr an maharim illah, having sabr, having patience from the illegal things Allah has made illegal. And he brought the verse in Imam Bukhari, he says, uh, the verse which is in Surah 2, Az-Zumar, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar, Indeed, those who are patient, Allah will reward them a reward which has no accounting. Allah will reward them a reward which has no accounting, meaning an immense reward. That is the reward of the sabirun, those who are patient. Now look, Imam Bukhari says, having patience from what? Maharimillah, the things Allah has made haram. There's three kinds of patience in Islam, Ikhwan, we have to understand. Sabr, this great status, this great character of sabr, patience, it is of three types. Number one, as sabru ala ta'atillah. Being patient in obeying Allah. You need patience. We need patience. You need to take that small pain or that burden which comes with waking up for Fajr. You need patience and take that small burden of fighting your soul and say, you know what? I'm going to give for Allah's sake. You need patience to fast 16 hours. So the first type of patience is being patient and constantly obeying Allah. And the second type of patience in Islam, sabr, is what we're discussing here. Patience in staying away from the haram, the prohibited actions. Because you need patience to turn away that mortgage. It's easy. You can have your own house and relax. And You need patience to say no to all those credit cards. 
you need patience to say no to the zina which is widely freely available you need patience to say no i'm not going to do this and that all of these sins it requires sabr and the third type of patience as sabr ala aqdar Allah, is the general patience which we know being patient with whatever happens to you you lost your business you lost some money someone passed away you became sick you fell down this happened there was a hurricane there was a tornado the calamities Allah tests you with you are patient during that these are the patients the three types of patients which exist being patient in worshiping Allah being patient in not or disobeying Allah and being patient in whatever happens to you those are patient Allah has prepared for them a reward which nobody knows he says Imam Bukhari wa qala Umar and Umar he said wajadna khayra aishina bis sabr we found the best of our life is in patience in sabr we found that the best part of our life is in sabr being patient when you're patient everything is good the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ikhwani we're going to read the hadith now listen to the hadith of course the we read the chain as usual uh, فبإسنادنا إليه قال حدثنا أبو اليمان أخبرنا شعيب عن الزهري قال أخبرنا عطاء ابن يزيد أن أبا سعيد أخبره. so this hadith is from Abu Sa'id al Khudri who says أخبره he informed عطاء بن يزيد أن أناس من الأنصار سألوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم يسأله أحد منهم إلا عطاه حتى نفد ما عنده فقال لهم حين نفد كل شيء أنفق بيديه ما يكون عندي من خير لا أدخر لا أدخره عند عنكم وإنه من يستعف يعفه الله ومن يتصبر يصبره الله ومن يستغني يغنيه الله ولن تعطوا عطاء خيرا وأوسع من الصبر يزيد أو عطاء بن يزيد he says that أبو سعيد الخضر informed him he said, some people from the Ansar, they came and they asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi to give them wealth. So he gave them and he gave them and he gave everything he had. He gave everything he had. When everything was finished and he had spent all that was in his hand, now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, whatever I have of the wealth the good and if you watch those lectures if you missed or you're with us when you read this book Allah calls wealth khair Allah calls wealth khair khair generally or literally it means what good Allah calls wealth khair for those who use it in good so the Prophet وسلم, after giving them everything, he says, ما يكون عندي من خير Whatever of this wealth I have, لا أدخره عنكم I will not withhold it from you to save it, no. Meaning I'll give it to you. وإنه, but you should understand that من يستعف The one who has عفاف Afaf is being chased. Afaf is not looking at other people's wealth and asking. Man yasta'ifa, he doesn't ask people. Man yasta'ifa, yu'ifuhullah, whoever refrains from asking people, Allah will make him content. Allah will make him content. And whoever practices patience, 
يصبره الله الله will make him patient ومن يستغني and whoever is satisfied with what he has he doesn't go after people's wealth يغنه الله الله will make him feel rich content ولن تعطوا عطاء and you'll never be given a gift a bounty Khairan, which is better, wa awsa, and which is so vast and beneficial, mina sabr, then sabr patience. These are the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is the part uh, which he brought him in Bukhari for this particular chapter. Being patient from what is haram. Being patient in general, look how the Prophet ﷺ defines patience. You'll never be given by Allah a gift, a bounty, a favor, which is greater and more wide, meaning more beneficial than what? Money, children, wealth, health. No. Sabr, patience. Because if you have patience, you can deal with anything. And if you have patience, you have succeeded. You have succeeded. You have succeeded. So the Prophet وسلم, he gave them everything he had. And then he said to them, whatever I have, I'll not hold it back. I'll give you. And that was the description of the Prophet He was the most generous of all people. Ibn Abbas says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس. He was the most generous of people. وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان. And he was more generous in Ramadan. And he was more generous in Ramadan. So he says, I'll give you everything, but you should understand something. The one who doesn't ask people, Allah will make him content. Subhanallah. It is not the quality of a believer to ask, to beg. To beg? No. It is allowed to beg if you don't have. Yes. But if you have and you beg people, the Prophet ﷺ said about those people who beg other people's wealth when they have enough they'll come on the day of judgment and their faces will have no flesh they'll be walking skeletons so the one who's content allah will make him content and that is the point and whoever practices patience you subbirahu allah allah will make him patient وَمَنْ يَسْتَغْنِ يُغْنِهِ اللَّهِ And the one who is content, he is satisfied with what Allah gave him, Allah will make him rich. As we read before, true richness is the richness of the heart. And then the Prophet ﷺ finished off by saying, وَلَنْ تُعْتَوْ عَطَاءً خَيْرًا وَأَوْسَعَ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ You can never be given a greater gift and a more wide gift than sabr, patience. Why? Because you need patience every moment of your life. Like we said, what are the three kinds of patience? Number one, patience in obeying Allah, worshipping Allah. You need to worship Allah every day, right? So you need that patience. Number two, patience to stay away from the haram. You need that every day. And number three, patience in the things which touch you. Problems of life. So when you're given patience, you have been taken care of in every moment of your life. So you can never be given a gift which is greater and more wide. Why is it wide, vast? Because it covers everything than patience. So this hadith, even though Imam Bukhari, he brought under this chapter on being patient from the haram. What is he teaching us? He's teaching us that what? It requires an effort to stay away from the haram. 
But when you do that, what does what is the reward? What is the reward? Allah makes you patient, and when you're patient, all of your life has been taken care of. Another very important benefit from this hadith, Ikhwani, we said number one, the generosity of the Prophet. It is the quality of a believer to be generous. You have to understand that. And being generous is a quality, it's a manner, it's a character. And like all manners and characters, where do they start? Where are manners located? Where are characters located? It's in your heart, you have to understand that. They are in your heart and then they are shown by your actions. That is how human beings are. You are good in your heart, you have taqwa, it shows on your body. You are corrupt in your heart, it shows in your actions. That is how it is, you can never change it, that's how Allah created us. You know, everybody knows the hadith. Surely in the, in the body there's a piece of flesh. If it is good, righteous, the whole body becomes like that. Why? In the actions. If it is corrupt, evil, the actions become corrupt and evil. What is that piece of flesh? Al-Qalb, the heart. So manners, if you go back to the definition of what are manners, what are characters, they are forces which are implanted in the heart and then they show off in your outward actions one of the great characters a muslim has is al jud al karam giving being generous and the opposite of that is al bukhl the one who's stingy and more than stinginess is shuh being covetous that is stinginess and loving other people's wealth. These are the opposite and their diseases which are found where? In the heart. That is why it's in the heart. That's why he can't give with his hands. Because the actions, they just translate what is in the heart. So everybody should be careful. And look at his heart. And Alhamdulillah is one of, it's two of those diseases we mentioned in the book. Bukhul. You'll be amazed at how the Prophet Sallallahu spoke against it. How he spoke against stinginess. And he showed practically, look, I always ask this question. The Prophet wasallam was he rich? Was he wealthy? He wasn't. We just read the hadith. Aisha says what? We used to go three months or two months. There's no food. It's just dates and water. Yet he's the most generous of all people. Showing you generosity is not because of wealth what you can give you give that is real generosity and that is when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said rubba dirham rubba dirham sabaqa mi'ata alf maybe one dirham it is better than a hundred thousand they said how yani someone gives one dirham and someone gives a hundred thousand yet the one who gave one he has more reward in front of Allah they said how he said maybe because he only has two dirham so he gave one so he gave half of his wealth well this one he has millions if he gave a hundred thousand it's nothing for him being generous so the Prophet was the most generous of all people Number two, the importance of practice. Manners, Ikhwani, manners, these characters we're talking about, they don't come by you sleep and then you wake up and you know. And you're good tomorrow, you're patient. No. These, like we said, they are forces, they have to be implanted in your heart. So they can translate into your actions. But because you, if you don't have that particular quality or manner, you have to train yourself. And that is why the Prophet says, Woman yasta'if, the one who practices what? Al Ifa, not asking. So not just one time, he tries to practice every time he says, I want to ask. Then Allah will make him content. 
that's the reward that will be his quality now and the one who practices patience something happens he feels angry says no i have to be patient something happens he says i have to be patient something happens he wants to say why me no he says no i cannot say that it's from allah the one who practices patience allah will make him patient and the one who practices being content allah gave me this alhamdulillah i worked hard this is where i go to alhamdulillah allah will make him rich so manners they are through practice yes you have to study so you know exactly what is sabr what are the signs of being patient how do i become patient what are some of the examples of becoming patient what are the rewards of being patient what are the punishments of not being patient you have to know all of that but at the end of the day it's a manner it's a quality it's a character it has to come through practice and the opposite the other part now the disease which is opposite like we said being stingy you won't sleep and wake up and say i'm no longer stingy no you can make the decision yes but first you have to understand what is stinginess what are the signs that you are stingy how did allah speak against this disease of the heart and this bad quality and then how do i cure myself that is what through knowledge but at the end of the day you have to practice it the next hadith he brought imam bukhari in the same chapter he says حدثنا خلاد بن يحيى حدثنا مسعر حدثنا زياد بن علاقة قال سمعت المغيرة بن شعبة يقول المغيرة بن شعبة رضي الله عنه يسيد كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي حتى ترمى أو تنتفخ قدماه فيقال له فيقول أفلا أكون عبدا شكورا المغيرة بن شعبة يسيد the Prophet وسلم, used to pray so much that his feet used to become swollen. That his feet will be swollen. And when they asked him about that, why do you pray so much that you stand so much, your feet are swollen? He would say, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a slave who is shakur, thankful to Allah? Shall I not be a slave who is thankful to Allah? What is the chapter we're discussing? Patience or refraining from the haram. What does this hadith say? The Prophet used to stand until his feet become swollen. When they asked him, he would say, Shall I not be a thankful slave? How is this hadith related to this chapter? Why is it brought in this chapter? Like we said in the beginning, patience is not only from the haram. Patience in worshipping Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he would stand until his feet were swollen. From the constant standing every other night or every night three four hours they said to him why do you do this when allah has forgiven you you're going to jannah and he said what even if i'm going to jannah shall i not be a thankful slave the main point of this hadith the main point of this hadith i want you to listen to me carefully what was the response of the Prophet ﷺ? Never forget those words. What did he say? Shall I not be a thankful slave? Shukr. Being thankful to Allah is by worshipping Him. It's not by saying Alhamdulillah. That is not shukr. And you have not reached the status of Shakirin. You have not. It is good to say Alhamdulillah, yes, but the real shukr which Allah wants from us is what? To use whatever Allah has given us, which is our health, 
which is our wealth, which is our time, to use that in worshipping Him. That is shukr. And if you look at the Quran, this has come so many times. So if you find yourself, Allah has blessed you so much, yet you're not worshipping Allah, even the basic worship, then you are not from the shakirin, you are from the kafirin. Not your disbeliever, you're not a disbeliever, but you're ungrateful to Allah. You're ungrateful to Allah. So if he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to stand until his feet were swollen, yet he was guaranteed Jannah, what about me and you? So if he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, should I not be thankful? Yet we just said here, he was not rich, he was poor. What about me and you? Most of us, we are richer than how the Prophet Sallallahu used to be, if you know that. How are we supposed to be to thank Allah? Are we thankful to Allah really? Just the basic, like I said, we pray Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha properly. Do we give from what Allah gave us? Like we said, give one dollar a day. Do we take care of our parents? Or make dua for them? Are we helpful to those who are in need? Are we doing something to spread the message of Islam? All of that will be asked. And those who do that, then they are doing it and they are thankful to Allah. Those who are not, you'll be asked. Now you can understand why Allah will ask you about your time. Why Allah will ask you about your youthhood? Why Allah will ask you about your health? You'll be asked about everything. Because everything requires shukr. So being patient in worshipping Allah. The next chapter Imam Bukhari brought chapter number 21. And we'll finish off with this. He says, Babu, and before I continue, actually, we discussed two main, one, two of the greatest characters of a Muslim today. What are they? Sabr, patience, and shukr, being thankful or grateful, grateful to Allah. These are two of the greatest qualities you can have as a Muslim. Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he wrote a great book called Sabirin wa Dakhiratul Shakirin. This book is like that big, of, it's at least 180-200 pages in the Arabic, if I'm not wrong. The book is just a debate. He is debating, Imam Al-Qayyim, which is greater in front of Allah. Patience or shukr. Sabr, patience or shukr, being grateful. All of them have a great status. Yes, and that is why now he's debating. So which one is greater? Because Allah mentions the reward like none other of the characters. Sabr and shukr. That book is available in English, the summarization of it. Summarization of it is available in English. Something, Patience and Gratitude, something like that, they translated it. It's a very good book. And you know Ibn al-Qayyim, he is the, the doctor of the heart. He's Tabib al-Qulub, the doctor of the heart. That is his field, these issues, that is his field. The next chapter he says, Babu, which is chapter number 21 from the book of Heart Softness. And as you see, the chapter is actually a portion of a verse of the Quran. Allah says, What surah is that? Huh? What surah is that? La. Surah Al-Talaq. 
Allah says, whoever has tawakkul, he relies and depends on Allah, then Allah is enough for him, sufficient for him. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Listen, Allah says, whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah will suffice him. If me and you, we are real, true Muslims, we believe in the Quran, then take that as a promise. Whoever relies and puts his trust in Allah, Allah will take care of you. For huwa hasbu. Qala Rabi' ibn Khaytham, or ibn Khuthaym. Rabi' ibn Khuthaym, he said, explaining this verse, that whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah will suffice him. He said, Rabi' he said, min kulli ma dhaqa ala nas, from everything which is difficult, he will take care of you. Do you know what is tawakkul? At tawakkul, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Saadi, he says, At tawakkul, ruh al tawheed. Tawakkul, putting your trust, relying, depending on Allah, that is the soul of your tawheed. You worshipping Allah alone, the main part is you depending, relying, trusting in Allah alone. Because you can never have tawakkul unless you have real tawheed. You really believe in Allah, you really know Allah. When you know Allah, you know that. فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is enough for me. Allah asks in the Quran, in Surah Al-Zumar, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ Isn't Allah enough for his love? The answer is of course. And Allah says about the tawakkul. The mutawakkilun, those who depend with who depend on Allah, Allah He loves them. And Allah is with them. At tawakkul, what is it? Putting your trust, reliance, depending on Allah in everything you do. Everything you want to achieve or everything you don't want for it to come to you, fear it. You put your trust, your heart is completely leading, relying, depending, trusting in Allah. You say Allah is enough. I leave it to Allah. When you do that, Allah has given you a promise. He'll take care of you. He suffices you. If you have that yaqeen, then you know and you see the wonders of tawakkul. But tawakkul does not mean you do not take the reasons, the worldly reasons Allah has put for you. So you don't become sick and you say, I won't take any medication, I won't go to the doctor, I have tawakkul. That is not tawakkul. That is just plain stupidity. Because Allah said to you, Tadawu, seek treatment. You don't sit in your home, sleeping every day, waking up, sleeping every day, waking up, and you say, Allah will provide for us. No, that is not tawakkul. That is a plot of the shaitan, in fact. Tawakkul, it means what? You do what you have to do as a human being, but you know, even if I did everything, it is only Allah who can make it happen. So I put my trust in Allah. You say, Ya Rabb, I'm just doing what I have to do, but everything is in your hands. When you do that, subhanAllah, you see the wonders in your life. Wallah, you see the wonders in your life. And that is one of the reasons, like we talked before here, two, three months ago, the reasons behind Salatul Istikhara, why, why you pray Istikhara? It's because you say, Ya Rabb, I've done my job, I leave things to you. That is real tawakkul. Look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the best example. So we understand tawakkul. The man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Oh Messenger of Allah, I just came with my camel. Should I tie it? 
or should I leave it and have tawakkul? He said, what? The Prophet ﷺ, tie your camel and have tawakkul. It's a camel. He doesn't know he's waiting for you. He's going to run. You do your means as a human being. I have to tie my camel. But everything you depend on Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, they wanted to kill him in Mecca, the kuffar of the Quraysh, right or wrong? And they plotted for it. And Allah told him, now make hijrah to Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he just walk out and say, I am the Prophet of God, I have tawakkul? No. First he called Abu Bakr, he said, okay, I've been, an, I've been told now to leave. And he said, that horse of yours, that camel of yours, the best camel, I'm going to buy it. Because he's going on a tough journey, he needs the best animal. That is tawakkul. You get the best animal, but everything you know is in the hands of Allah. Abu Bakr said, no, I can't take your money. Am I going with you? He said, yes, and he started crying, Abu Bakr. They organized with Abu Bakr's son and Asma bint Abu Bakr. She'll be bringing them food. He didn't say, I'm the prophet. I don't have to bring food and make arrangements. Tawakkul. I'm saying this because we have some people who have wrong understandings. You do your part, but you leave everything for Allah. And that is why when they were in the cave and the Quraysh, the Kuffar, they were above them, Abu Bakr was scared. He said, what? If one of them looked under his feet, they would see us. What did the Prophet Sallallahu say? لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Don't be afraid. Allah is with us now. This is the work. We have done our job. Allah is with us now. We are hiding in a cave. They came looking. Leave the rest to Allah. So the one who relies on Allah, Allah will suffice him. We will discuss this <coughs> tomorrow. Inshallah, we will take it from there. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Shadu la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka tu bilayk. Zakumullah khairan. We have few minutes to add adhan. Make dua. It's time to make dua. It's not time to talk. Assalamu alaikum.